thank you uh, our attendees for joining the webinar uh, which we prepared for you with our friends unite you uh, we got acquainted with them in chicago this year at internet retailer e-commerce uh, exhibition and uh, conference and we were quite impressed with the technology and the wireless convenience uh, of uh, their solution so we hope that our potential partnership will be uh, beneficial for you at Cut Merchants. And uh, uh, to begin with, uh, Michael Montrose is going to share his vast knowledge uh, about uh, best practices of mobile point of sale. Uh, I hope that his piece of advice will help you to earn more, probably even during the upcoming season of Christmas sales. So, uh, Michael, will you please proceed? Actually, uh, thank you, Ksenia. I'm actually going to have Amanda Martin from our team share a few um, slides and share some things at the beginning, and then I'll jump in uh, to talk through some of the retail experience with Mobile POS and uh, do a live demo. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Amanda. Thank you, Mike. Um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today, um, and as Sanya mentioned, we are going to be talking about mobile point of sale. Um, and one of the things we're going to be focusing on as we give you some information is increasing in-store conversions using these devices. Um, one of the things I wanted to do first, just to, um, we did a brief introduction, but give you guys a little bit more information about our company. Um, we are Unite U, um, and we have a omnichannel platform. Uh, over the past 15 years, we've specialized in creating digital solutions specifically for brick and mortar retailers. Um, and our platform has evolved over the last 15 years to become more of a modular commerce platform that has solutions that can be extended from it and integrate with other um, systems, such as the Xcart um, e-commerce platform. Uh, new solutions that are extended from our platform um, have the benefit of being integrated with our sophisticated data architecture. And um, new solutions then can be implemented quickly without um, lengthy and costly timelines. Um, this is just kind of an overview of uh, showing that. So we have our commerce platform, as you can see here, and we have the point solutions that come, of, come off of it, such as the mobile point of sale, which we'll be talking about today. Um, so this webinar, as Xenia mentioned, is um, we're trying to gauge some interest amongst the Xcart user base and see if solution would be something that would be interesting and helpful to the Xcart users. Um, and if, an in, if there is a lot of interest, um, an integration with Xcart would be completed. Um, and basically what that would allow is for Xcart users to seamlessly deploy mobile point of sale in their retail stores and have access to their online inventory from their Xcart e-commerce site. Um, this is just an example of one of our clients who is now using the mobile point of sale. Um, they've been with us for several years. They implemented the mobile point of sale um, at the Boston Marathon this past year. And here you can see um, a City Sports employee using the mobile point of sale within their retail store location. Um, they've mostly been using these uh, devices at events to quickly process transactions. Um, some of the results that we gathered from the Boston Marathon is that it's very easy to train uh, sales associates on these mobile point of sale devices and only takes about minutes. 27% um, of all the transactions that they did at the event were taken on the mobile point of sale devices. Um, and on average, associates can complete transactions in less than a minute of a, and a half. So you can imagine um, that during a busy event such as the Boston Marathon, this would be very important to be able to quickly convert people um, in a long line and be able to check them out and have them on their way. And one of the other things we're going to be talking about today um, is how the importance of money and documents flowing to the correct systems post-event. Um, so Mike will give you a little bit more information on how that works. Um, he's going to be talking about some key objectives. Um, some of the things that we're the information we're going to be giving you is, as we talked about earlier, increasing average order values and increasing the in-store conversion rate. Um, so with that, go ahead and take it away, Mike. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Ksenia. Thanks for everyone for joining. Um, yeah, as we look at the in-store experience, we, 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 you know, one of the most important things as you look at your stores, uh, if you look at the, what's happening in those stores, certainly the average order value or the average ticket is a, is a big indicator of um, how your stores are doing. 
as is the in-store conversion rate. So if your average order value, you know, when somebody comes in and they purchase, it's $50 or $75. If you can move the needle, if you can move that number up, that's a huge impact on your business and profitability. Same thing with the in-store conversion rates. If, you know, if 20% of the people who walk into your in-store environment buy today, if you can move that up to 25 or 30 or 40%, um, that's a that's a huge impact on your business. Um, the other part of this is is as Amanda had mentioned, is making sure that the systems are automated, that everything flows correctly, um, and that uh, you know whatever systems you're using today, that those are synchronized with, those are updated with uh, you know with invoice or order information, and uh, that the financial you know the stores get credited for the money properly. All of those things have to work uh, seamlessly. Um, so as we um, as we looked at what gets in the way of those objectives, what gets in the way of increasing your average order value or your in-store conversion rates, um, certainly these are some of the areas. Um, speed is one of them. Uh, it's very frustrating as a as a retailer to you know see you know, have a sale going on or experiencing a holiday environment where. People are really frustrated. They're standing in line, and some of them get frustrated and leave. You know, just because they, it's taking too long. Um, that can certainly uh, be a very frustrating experience. Or you know, if you're at an event um, where there's just uh, bursts of traffic that come in, um, those certainly impact uh, your ability to you know to convert um, those willing buyers uh, into customers. And the other, the other thing that's, that is definitely problematic, especially if you have multiple locations or you have inventory in various places, it can be very frustrating if a customer comes into a particular store and you are out of stock in the item that they're looking to purchase. And, and there are ways around that. There's, you know, there's, um, some of you have probably set up uh, systems to be able to um, figure some of this out. Some, some people have employed kiosks in the store. Um, to be able to, uh, if you run out of a particular size on a, on a SKU or a product, um, that you can uh, immediately go over to the kiosk and, and complete a transaction uh, for the for the item that the customer is looking for, and then take the items that they have in hand and go to the cash register at the point of sale and transact. And so, uh, certainly, there's ways around that, but it's a bit clunky right now. That can be, it's a two system process, and sometimes that can take 15, 20 minutes by the time you're going to hear all the information and move from system to system. So um, that can slow things down and kind of get in the way of your average order value and your conversion rates. Um, store abandonment, certainly, uh, it's probably one of the biggest issues you deal with. You know, people coming in with an objective but walking out without a sale. Um, sometimes that's the, the the associates that you have, uh, if you look at your most experienced person who really understands the product line and is constantly engaging with customers, um, a lot of times you can have very high conversion rates with a particular sales associate, but the newer uh, sales associate that comes on uh, may not know the product line as well, and so you, you, you know, sometimes there's a friction there and, and their conversion rates are much lower, therefore dragging down your overall average conversion rate in the store. Um, so that inconsistent experience, you know, uh, it creates a, a challenge for you as a retailer. Um, so it's interesting as we've been, you know, we've been working with the online, you know, helping brick and mortar retailers digitize in terms of digital experience on, on the web and, and on mobile commerce and certainly on uh, over the internet. And what's really interesting is a lot of the technologies, a lot of the methodology, a lot of the things that we can do. Uh, online to, to drive increased conversions and increased order sizes, um, we're now starting to be able to kind of deploy that into the store. And that's one of the things that we'd like to talk about today is how do we take some of that technology and apply it in the store so you, we, can, we can drive uh, your key metrics in that environment. So I'm going to switch to a live demo here. And um, uh, what I'm going to do is show you uh, walk through a, a fast transaction, so line busting uh, when you've got you know you've got people to transact and you've got to do it quickly. Um, then we're going to slow it down and, and do a, a, a transaction where we incorporate products that that aren't available in the store, as well as some recommendations and kind of show how that experience uh, works. So let me flip over to my desktop, and hopefully you can see. Uh, Hopefully you can see live what I've got going here. Um, just to show you the hardware on this particular device, um, let's see if I can get my 
to wake some of these devices up. There we go. So to give you a sense of the hardware, hopefully uh, the camera's working here and you can kind of see, this is, the, this is the, the mobile point of sale that I'm holding here. Um, and you can see the slot there where the card, the card is swiped. Um, this is a fully PCI compliant, highly secure device. Uh, the card is swiped at the moment of, of this, of this it's encrypted at the moment of the swipe and it's encrypted throughout the process, uh, point to point encryption throughout our system. Um, and, and back here on the back here, we've got a, um, a scanner and that's activated by these gray buttons that you can kind of, kind of see on the top here. So I've got, I've got a, a sheet here that would act as uh, various products. And just to show you, uh, you know, kind of the process here, um, I'm going to go ahead and scan an item. And um, hopefully that gives you a good sense of the hardware and how that works. And now we'll kind of focus on this interface and, and the kind. So what I'm quickly going to do first is, um, is just walk through a transaction um, so that you can kind of see how how we kind of do work this in my investing mode. Um, so uh, um, we can what we do is ask for the customer's email so that we can email them a receipt. Um, optionally, we can also uh, print to a Bluetooth printer. And um, once we have the, the customer's email, uh, we go into the payment screen. Um, we can take multiple types of payment, including gift cards, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and scan my credit card uh, to put this balance towards the credit card. I'm going to hit complete purchase. And so if you can imagine somebody was standing in line with, with one, uh, we were able to walk up and say, hey, can I help you check out quickly? And they give me the credit card um, and in, you know, what has it been, 30 or 40 seconds here, uh, we've transacted uh, and a receipt will have immediately hit their smartphone and so we, we just put the item in a bag and they're on the way out the door and they don't have to, you know, within a minute they've been transacted, helped and uh, it's a great, it's great in terms of line busting. We can also, like I said, we can print optionally to a Bluetooth printer as well um, if they would like a hard receipt. So that kind of shows, you know, how we can handle some of the speed issues, transacting when it's busy or at an event. Uh, we have a we have a very large client that just went to a uh, that was supporting their customer Keller Williams. It was a it was a huge realty group. Um, they have a massive show in Texas, and uh, and after every session, in between sessions, their their booth was just swamped, and there were just you know tons of people wanting to buy product, and and so they were able to use the devices to quickly transact and move them through the process. So uh, we're going to go back to the demo again. I'm going to go ahead and scan that same item and pull it up here. And um, in this particular case, it's a dress. And uh, we can, um, you can see here on the bottom that we've got recommendations. Now, this is what's powerful. This is when, you know, as a, as a sales associate, um, this gets, speaks to one of the issues we talked about earlier where a younger sales associate doesn't necessarily know the product line. And so what's great is that we can display several recommended products that go with this particular item. So we can look at accessories that go with this particular item. So in this case, it's a dress, but uh, we've got several items here that would go perfectly with that dress. Um, a senior sales associate might, might understand that, but uh, certainly a junior person might not uh, know that as well. And, and then we have similar items. If they kind of like the style of the dress, but not, you know, they, they'd like it to, uh, maybe with a different cut around the uh, the shoulders and so forth, we have options there. So this does it empowers the, um, the sales associate to be able to make much better recommendations to the client. So once they scan an item, they have all of these various options that they can kind of show and engage the customer with. So yes, they were looking for a dress, but actually, you know, in this case, maybe they were they would say, actually, I'm looking for a purse. Um, looks like this purse would go perfectly with that dress. And so we can uh, we can take a look at that. Now in this case, I'm going to pretend that this purse isn't in stock. This is actually something that we just ran out of. It's a very hot item, and we've actually run out of it in our store. And so I can actually pull up a nice full resolution image, hold it up to the dress, show how perfectly it will go with the dress. 
Um, and the customer goes, wow, that's great. That's exactly what I want. Um, I've got an event coming up this weekend. And uh, um, are you going to ship it to me? And you can say yes. And we can next day air it uh, to you so you can have it in time for your event. So what I'm going to do in this case, then I'm going to put the item into the cart. Because this is something that I don't have available in the store, I'm going to designate this as a ship item. So you can see I've, I've hit this toggle switch. And this is where this particular solution crosses lines that no, no other solution that we've seen has done eloquently. Um, essentially what we're doing is we're taking the functionality of a kiosk um, and we're able to display items that are only available in another store or in our web inventory or in our distribution center somewhere else and put it into the same basket as items that I have right here in my hand uh, that I can scan. Um, this creates an efficiency that's pretty unique in the market. And so, um, so in this case, I've got my, you know, essentially a web item and an in-store item in the same basket. I'm going to go through the same process, and, and this time, uh, when I enter the email address, it's going to go look into my shopper profiles, my previous shopper profiles, to see if this particular customer has worked with this in the past. Um, and in this case, I have. And so it, it pulls back my, my address and phone number information. And so I can verify with the customer, is this, is this your current information? If the shopper hadn't been with us before, we just simply enter that in. Um, we hit continue. And there we can see we can verify the billing and shipping address. Um, and we can pick the, the method of shipment. In this case, the customer wanted it the next day. And so we can apply that. Um, it will give a tax calculation as well as add in the shipping and um, create a balance of $471. And you can see here, effectively, we've more than doubled the sale. Uh, they had initially just been looking at the dress, but now we've been able to sell a purse, which in, in effect is actually more expensive than the dress. So we've you know, more than doubled the sale, uh, increasing our average order value in the process. Um, I'll go ahead and swipe the card to apply the, uh, this to the uh, credit card. And again, I'll just make note on the screen, we could actually take a gift card here. So if they had a $100 gift, certain gift card, we could put the $100 gift card there and then apply the rest to the credit card or cash. Uh, if you use cash, uh, most, most often you would use a Bluetooth cash drawer. And so that can be enabled as well. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and complete the purchase. And go ahead and sign. And this time, uh, you'll notice actually that we've created two orders. And this is how we deal with the fact that we have in-store items as well as um, ship to items. So the the first item, the first order up here, uh, 2516, that is for the in-store item. That's for the dress. Um, this will get injected into the systems that you currently use um, as an invoice. And so that will, that will uh, accrue money towards the store. Um, it will make sure that the inventory is decremented uh, within your existing systems. Um, we can even use the same merchant accounts that you use for your store. So unlike Square or Amazon's new mobile POS or um, I think PayPal has one, um, they, they require you to use their merchant accounts. In this case, you're able to leverage the merchant account that you already have in place for your store. Um, so all of that gets done on that particular order. Uh, it, it becomes an invoice in essence. This one on the bottom um, will get treated just like any other web. So if you, want, if you have a process that you currently use um, with Xcart, um, we will uh, inject this as an order into those systems for fulfillment, and it will be treated just like any other um, web order that you receive through Xcart. So what we've done is taken something that's very complex when you're talking about a kiosk and you know the point of sale and moving the customer back and forth and 15 minutes of you know of, of process down to a very clean one to two minute process on one system where we've been able to upsell. We've had the information we need to recommend to the customer and the client and, and so forth. And so, um, and in this case, we can actually do, uh, we can actually print the receipt. Um, I think I've got my printer on here. Let me just make sure I can just go to the device. Uh, 
uh, there we go. And so, uh, go ahead and print. And you can see that it's printing your C square. And this printer is actually quite interesting. You can uh, you can even wear it on your belt, which is great for events. So um, we actually had a very large event in Vegas that did recently. We took uh, we took uh, a young woman who had never met us before. We five minutes before the event, we trained her how to use the device and asked her if she would come up on stage and and, and run a transaction. She was able to put this on her on her belt and uh, come up and on, in front of about 500 people, run a transaction, print out a receipt. For our CEO while he was presenting, <laughs> so it's that easy to train. Um, that's the you know that's that's obviously the well when you're working in an in in-store environment, you want something that's very quick and easy to use. One thing I'll just mention, and I, I just want to mention it briefly because uh, I don't want to confuse you. We've when we set this up with uh, Cassinia, um, we this was the brand of this particular solution. And um, uh, next week at shop.org in Seattle, uh, if some of you are going, um, we actually have an event we can invite you to. But um, we, um, at next week, we'll be introducing uh, a new solution name. This, this product, this solution has been in development for a couple of years, but uh, we've just uh, uh, gone through a rebranding process, upgrading the brand uh, to reflect the, uh, the scale and scope of the solution. Um, this is kind of how our booth will look if you're happening to be at shop.org. Um, I just I just wanted you to, to just not be confused when you saw some of this uh, uh, if, uh, you know, next week or in the coming, coming weeks or months. Um, this is how the brand looks inside the interface. Um, here's a, a picture of somebody you know, walking around the store and transacting with customers right on the spot. Um, this will be the website, so you can go to getumo.com com to be able to get information about it. Um, and like I said, if you're in Seattle and you're going to the shop.org event, uh, we'd be more than happy to have you come to our launch party. Um, you can get details on our website, uh, but uh, that will be Tuesday evening next week uh, at a very cool cocktail bar in uh, on the waterfront in Seattle. Um, let me switch back to our uh, presentation here. Hopefully that was helpful from a live demo to see what's possible. Um, it's taking a second. There we go. Okay, so let's review just quickly the um, the resistors that we. Saw there on this demo. Certainly, speed. You know, getting in. You know, being able to solve that problem. I think you saw that we can move things through very quickly. You know, within 30 seconds, you can transact quickly with somebody and have the door. Um, from a SKU and product availability standpoint, you can see that we can we can add inventory in from multiple locations and and uh, other stores and as well as web inventory and so forth. Um, we can put them all into one transaction, which increases the average order value. Um, store abandonment. Uh, what's really interesting about mobile POS, and there's more and more retailers like Nordstrom's and um, uh, I think Perialis, others who are implementing this, what they're finding is that the sales associates spend a lot less time hiding kind of behind the cash register type of thing and are out more interacting and engaging with your customers. So it creates a much more dynamic environment, that better customer experience, they have a lot more interaction with the salespeople, and those um, those interactions, as you know, translate into sales. And uh, what's also interesting is capturing people at the moment of decision. There's a there's a very interesting dynamic, as you know, when you have several items, and then all of a sudden you're walking up to the catch register and you're thinking through, well, do I really need this one or do I need? So sometimes your you know your possible sale has dwindled to maybe half of what it was because by the time they get to the front store, they they've decided, well, maybe I don't need these other things, and they've gone ahead and put them back and showed up to the catch register. So there, if, if, if interest was a graph, um, the, the peak of the interest level would be right as they're engaging with the product and right as they're um, trying it on or looking in the mirror or whatever it is. Um, that's a great point to be able to scan the item, have it into the cart, and have it ready to go. 
Um, we have ski shops and um, sporting goods retailers who put together packages for entire families. And what's great is that you know they can have a shopping cart and uh, walking around the store and grabbing. Okay, we're going to get. Uh, um, our son Joey figured it out, and so we get the skis, we get the boots, we get the poles, we get everything, and we get them in, get it into the shopping cart, and we scan it as we're entering those things, and then when we're done, we simply take the credit card, they wheel the shopping cart out the door. It's, if they don't have to drag everything through the front of the store, it's a much better experience. And you can see from the recommendation engine how powerful the the ability to put you know very relevant recommendations in front of your potential customer is. Uh, is quite uh, is quite powerful and can, you know, can in a lot of cases double or triple your your order values. Um, let's see. So as we look at the you know just to kind of emphasize some of those unique things that we talked about, certainly that endless aisle is 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 really key. Um, we were just on a briefing call with uh, with a, one of the primary forester analysts who looks at in store technologies digital technologies that are moving into the store and he said that you know there's so many gimmicks and things that are smoke and mirrors things that you know like you know mirrors interactive mirrors in dressing rooms and um, you know large wall kiosks and he said you know those are interesting but they're not really fundamentally changing the retail experience what what people really want when they walk into the store is to be able to find the product do you have the product i'm looking for that's their number one issue and as you can see, having access right into the customer to all of your inventory, no matter where it is, whether it's in the store or not, um, is very powerful. Um, the other thing is this recommendation engine. Um, we think that that is probably one of the biggest ideas. And I don't need to believe at that point, but I think it's quite, um, quite, uh, quite exciting when you start to be able to. We can structure data to be able to present these recommendations, but um, we can actually use other types of intelligence. Well, one of the things we're working on currently is um, their interactive or their surfing behavior on your site uh, and past purchases and customer history uh, helping create the intelligence that drives the recommendations that are happening right on the floor in front of the customer. So essentially as you, you know, recognize the customer, capture their email address, hey, just better serve you, let me get your email address so I can pull up your profile and I can really help you much better. Then we can power more intelligence into those recommendations and accessories based on past purchases, which again starts to be quite interesting as well. Um, and as you look at some of the benefits in the ROI, hopefully you've been seeing some of the advantages. Maybe you've been looking at uh, at using um, mobile POS and you've been looking at different solutions and you're already really sold on the idea, but. You know, just a quick recap, combining the in-store and ship two items in a fast transaction, that's powerful. Accessibility of all products, on the floor recommendations, that fluid customer experience. One thing we didn't talk about is just springing up more square footage. If you've got three cash registers or five cash registers at the, at the front of the store, you can actually reduce that, that footprint down to one or two and um, have, you know, two to five or six mobile POS devices that enable your cell groups to be out customers and transacting um, and it, it's a much better use of your square footage and, and uh, the space that you have um, and then as I mentioned transacting at the, the, the moment that the customer is very excited about a product that really has a dramatic ability to increase your in-store conversion rates um, we were uh, we've been talking to um, I can't say the name but a, but a very high-end uh, speaker manufacturer who has uh, been opening retail stores and the idea of being able to capture when the when the customers in that moment in of that you know amazing demo that they just had of the audio system to be able to, to you know capture um, and transact with the customer at that peak of excitement uh, that was to them uh, extremely powerful. So hopefully that's that's a that's a good overview and a good uh, some good insight into you know how mobile POS can can kind of dramatically change some of the fundamentals of your in store experience. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Amanda again to um, to quickly run through some. Um, she's going to step back and look at some, what some of the analysts have been saying about about uh, mobile POS and some of the um, some of the trends that are happening with retailers currently and what we're learning, um, as well as uh, probably run up uh, a couple of questions uh, as a poll. Uh, thanks, everyone, and turn it back to Amanda. Thanks, Mike. Um, it looks like we actually got a question, so I just want to answer that quickly um, before I go into that. Um, 
one of the questions was for the email field that we have, um, what if uh, customers are reluctant to leave their email because of spam? And we actually did get some feedback on that from uh, one of our clients that Mike mentioned at the Keller Williams show was using these devices. And they said some people were a little reluctant to leave their emails, but once they explained to them that, you know, this is so that we can process your order and send you a digital receipt, they, you know, they were okay with it. Um, they did have that feedback for us. And also there is a toggle on there that you can set to no, I do not want to receive future emails um, so that they know that they're not going to be getting spam. It's just for processing their order. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, Thank okay. You, sure, you're welcome. Okay, let's see if I can... Next slide here. There we go. Okay. So, um, like Mike mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit because we have um, a partnership with Forrester right now, a little bit about what the analysts are saying in the industry. Um, so, more than half of retailers um, are planning to roll out mobile point of sale solutions by 2015, and about 30% already have done so. So, that's a pretty high number that we're seeing. Integration is one of the most significant con considerations that retailers need to take into account, um, especially for mid-sized retailers. Um, when implementing a mobile point of sale, you don't want to have um, a mess with your back office systems like we were talking about earlier. You want to make sure that all the documents are flowing to the correct places um, so that you don't have kind of an accounting mess on your hands after an event or after implementing this in one of your stores. Um, as we talked about earlier, endless aisle is um, is something that you have to have um, when you're implementing a mobile point of sale. That's the main thing that customers are worried about. Like Mike said, do you have the product that I'm looking for? Um, I want to be able to get that product, whether it's from online inventory, from a warehouse, etc. cetera. Um, so 35% of online adults are expecting that associates will have mobile equipped devices um, to check out in the aisle. Um, and then one of the biggest values is being able to save that sale when the store is out of stock and getting your customer the product that they want. Some of the real results that um, retailers are actually seeing in the field, um, Perry Ellis um, has implemented a mobile point of sale and Forrester did a report on the results that they saw. They saw a 14% uplift in their average order values um, within their stores after implementing the endless file capabilities we've been talking about. So being able to access inventory from other places, such as online, and being able to get that product to the customer even though you don't have it in stock in your store at that moment. Um, so just a quick example of how the ROI of these devices can add up quick. Um, so one of the stats we learned was that a mid-market retailer loses about eight sales a day due to out-of-stock um, items. And you can expect a 14% uplift, as we saw from Perry Ellis in the um, example that Forrester shared. Um, so a store taking in about $4,000 worth of transactions a day would see a, a $560 uplift per store per day. Um, and then a store taking in about $15,000 a day would see uh, about $2,100 uplift um, in their store per day. So as you can see, that revenue can really um, grow and continue to provide you with return on investment. Um, so now I just want to open the floor up um, for anyone who has any additional questions that we weren't able to answer today. Um, and then if you have any additional questions you would like to directly just reach out to us, you can get in contact with us at info at uniteu.com. If anyone has any questions, please enter them into the please. chat window. Thank you, Amanda. I cannot see if anyone is chatting or is typing, so it looks like uh, our guests have no questions. Belinda, Brian, Juan, Rene, Leslie, do you have any questions? Well, it looks like uh, your presentation was very comprehensive. Okay. Well, I guess um, do you think at this time I should go ahead and re uh, release the poll then, since we have no questions? Well, let's try. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and I'm just going to do a quick poll for everyone to give us an answer. There will be just two quick questions. So we fill in the poll.
Okay, I'll give everyone just a, another couple seconds to vote. Amanda, can you see any votes? Yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and close the poll. Um, I'll share the results with everyone. It looks like we had about 25% oh, 25 of those um, attending today said that they have considered mobile point of sale, about 12% saying that they had not yet considered it. Um, the majority of everyone attending is saying that they would be using a mobile point of sale device for um, either tent sales or events that they attend. Um, some people did say that they would be using a mobile point of sale to increase the average order values within their retail stores. Okay. All right. Well, that concludes our presentation for today. So I want to thank everyone again for joining, and hopefully it was very informative for you. Hey, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we like your presentation, we like your hardware, and we like your experience. I guess, I hope that our merchants will be able to earn more with the help of your device and our software. And let your sales grow. Thank you everyone for joining and have a great day. Goodbye.